Hey guys, Juju here. Today I want to do kind of a recap slash vlog of the Japan regional qualifiers that I participated in this past weekend. Um, so some of you may be paying attention to the road to BlizzCon, um, but I imagine it, uh, most of you are paying attention mostly to the Americas qualifiers or the Europe qualifiers. And uh, I've been trying to shed light on, you know, the other regions. Uh, for example, um, I casted the China BlizzCon Qualifier Tournament um, in English, and those uh, VODs are on my YouTube channel right here, so uh, shameless plug. Um, and today I want to talk about the Japan Road uh, to BlizzCon, and uh, to talk about that we should probably just go over uh, the road for everyone, just to make it little bit more clear. Um, some of you have seen this, some of you haven't, some of you have but are still confused. Uh, so probably best to go over that all that right now. Um, so as you can see on the screen there, uh, the first part's pretty easy, right? Four people from America, four people from Europe, four people from China, and four people from Asia Pacific. Um, from there it gets a little bit complicated though. Um, so as you can see as we scroll down, um, it says uh, six advance from US, Canada, and two advance from Latin America. What that means is that those eight people advance to the Americas Championship. Um, and so they go there, and there's eight people there, and they determine the um, American champion, basically. And uh, on top of that, they determine the top four people to go to BlizzCon. So once you get to the Americas Championship, all you have to do is finish in the top half and uh, you get to go to BlizzCon. And the same thing for Europe. Um, I casted the China Championship. It was it seemed like it was a little bit different. Um, in the end, they were placed in groups, um, in two groups of four to determine uh, who goes to BlizzCon, but the system before that was a little bit different. Um, you can kind of check that out on my channel. Essentially, what they had was the, uh, the top eight players. All I had to do was win one match, which I think is... Yeah, I think it's pretty different from the other regions. The other regions, I you have to win at least at least two, I believe, from either Europe or America. So they set it up so that the top eight players uh, were in a much more advantageous position uh, in China than in Europe or America. Um, and Asia Pacific is a little bit complicated. Um, as you can see, two from Korea, one from Japan, uh, two from Taiwan, one from Southeast Asia, and two from Australia slash New Zealand. Um, so each of their regions has, you know, their own separate qualifiers to uh, determine the amount of players who qualify from that region. Uh, so, for example, obviously two, the top two from Korea go, the top one from Japan goes, on and on and on. Um, and if you scroll down, though, it gets a little bit more complicated from there. Uh, as far as uh, Europe and the Americas go, so as you can see on the screen there, um, if you have two points or more, Oh, sorry, I should start from the top, shouldn't I? Um, so the top eight in points are in a pretty advantage advantageous position. I think they get two buys in the uh, regional qualifier. Um, and, but if you're ninth through 23rd, you're just entered normally into the first round. Um, and if you're if you have two points, but you're not in the top 23, you have to enter uh, the last call tournament. And you basically, if you are in the top 16 of that, you enter into the first round um, of the tournament along with the 9th through 23rd players. And uh, if you win a couple rounds, then you probably meet up with someone who is first through 8th. Um, so as it says there, it says online regional double elimination qualifier. It actually was... Um, Oh, that's the okay. That's the that's the regional qualifier. There. Okay, I was thinking the last call tournament they were saying was uh, double elimination. It was the last call tournament actually was single elimination, uh, but yeah, that's re the arrow is pointing to the actual tournament uh, between the uh, between everyone basically the top forty players. So that's how it works for America and Europe, uh, but for Japan uh, in particular, they basically had. Um, a double elimination tournament. Since there's not enough players to have um, a last call, or they, they could have had a last call if there were enough players, but um, that would have been kind of excessive if you think about it, uh, to go through all of that and just to get one player. 
um, into the the uh, Asia Pacific qualifiers. Um, but yeah, since there's not that many people um, who play Hearthstone in Japan, and uh, the reason for that, by the way, is there's no uh, Japanese client for Hearthstone. Hint, hint. Blizzard make a Japanese client. Um, then uh, yeah, that's so that's the reason why there's only one person from Japan. Um, so, uh, uh, I think I'm forgetting something, but it doesn't really matter. I guess we can just go on straight into the, uh, oops, sorry. Give me one second Need to actually, yeah, there we go. I think this will work. Oops. What just happened? Okay, sorry. Give me one second. I don't want to do this all over again, so we're just going to have to live with uh, this little hiccup right now. <laughs> sorry. Uh, here we go. I think this will work. Yep, there we go. Okay. So that that leads me to the standings going into the Japan uh, regional qualifier. Uh, so as you can see there, these are the top players who went to the Jap Japan tournament. And again, all these players played in um, a double li double elimination tournament, and uh, whoever won uh, gets to be the one person from Japan in the Asia Pacific qualifier. And uh, as there's eight people there, you basically have a 50-50 chance, um, you know, assuming that everyone's equal uh, skill level of going to BlizzCon. So basically, Japan gets a, a half person representative to BlizzCon if you think of it that way. Um, so yeah, going into it, uh, as you can see, I'm on the right there, 19th place uh, with 5 points. I guess here's where I have my excuses, right, for having 5 points. Um, so when the rank system started, I think it was around January, um, there was a lot going on, and I just uh, finished you know, BlizzCon stuff last year. Um, and I basically got behind in accumulating points because there are a lot of stuff going on uh, personally as well. And uh, I got too far behind to basically keep up with the top players, uh, in particular the uh, NA people on the NA server. So I basically decided, okay, I'm just going to get enough points in order to uh, go to the last call tournament and then try to make it from there. Um, it turns out I was actually able to go from either the Japan uh, region, because I'm a resident of Japan, or I could try to qualify via uh, the Americas server. Uh, but then I'd have to go through the last qual tour tournament. Uh, it turns out in the end, since you only had to win basically four rounds uh, to qualify for the top 40 for Americas, I ended up having it ended up being pretty much a, almost the same road essentially, uh, because Japan um, obviously there's less players and I go straight to the regional qualifier. But I have to get first, uh, which is you know pretty difficult obviously. Um, so anyway, I ended up with enough points to be able to get into this thing and uh, decided to go to, through Japan um, just because, you know, I've never really been... Um, uh, well, it, basically, I get it's just nice to get to the uh, regional qualifiers automatically, and uh, I didn't know this at the time, but I get, you know, expenses paid trip to uh, Tokyo as well, and I live about, you know, I think 300, 400 kilometers away, so... Uh, and they're being pretty nice for that. Anyway, let's get to the players, uh, the notable players, I should say. So across 7224 there at the top, um, he is notable for finishing second on the NA ladder in, uh, or I should say America's ladder, uh, the America's ladder in August, um, and for getting number one with the uh, particularly interesting version of mid-range Secret Paladin, uh, which is still pretty strong, by the way. You should check it out. Um, and then second there is Kano. He got second on the America server in June. Uh, Koroneko, uh, he's won a lot of online tournaments. Um, he's pretty good. He's on Team Hearthstone players, I believe. Uh, lives uh, near me. Um, and then from there, uh, all these players are kind of just solid. K2G, Akogare. Um, Akoneko is kind of funny. He's a 43-year-old guy like <laughs> who plays basically aggro decks. He doesn't have time to play other decks. And I just noticed that he actually had 43 points and he's 43 years old. Uh, he remarked in his like introduction, because they uh, introduced the seeded players, uh, the top eight players, plus the guy who qualified from the Fireside Gathering. Uh, they introduced them at the beginning, and he remarked that he was 43. 
um, and that his like wife was letting him do this. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Anyway, so and we had double A. Uh, Sevilla is notable for winning uh, the uh, the JCG tournament back to back. Um, and then uh, going down, um, never heard of Ponit. Uh, Arusu is pretty good, um, but and then so we have a uh, Yutori who is notable for being the Japan qualifier for the uh, the World Collegiate Championship. Um, and then down the line, um, everyone else is not, there's not much to say. Uh, some of these players are solid, some aren't, to be frank. Um, so yeah, those are the players that I was thinking about going in, the players I was kind of concerned with uh, if I was going to win the championship or win the Japan Championship to qualify. Um, so, from there we can look at the bracket, um, obviously, spoilers. <laughs> but, um, so, as you can see on the screen there, um, not the best bracket making, because as you can see we have, uh, for instance, you know, two blank spaces next to Koroneko and next to double A, whereas Cross, who's supposed to be the number one seed, had to play in the second round and only got one by. Um, could have maybe fixed that a little bit and made sure someone like, for instance, if you look at the left side, Hydron, Hydron and Lynx, maybe place one of those players uh, on the other side next to Koroneko. Um, so could have maybe made the bracket a little bit better. Um, obviously they went with the, or they had a random drawing, uh, but they could have randomly drawn it and then made sure that they put it put the players in specific spots um, beforehand. In any case, so as you can see there I lost to Arusu in the first round. There's L's in the end of his name, but it's Arusu. He, I don't know why he put L's at the end of his name. Um, I never actually met him before or known of him before. Um, he's a pretty cool guy actually. Uh, and he's pretty good at Hearthstone. Um, so, I mean, I could kind of tell from his plays as I was playing him that he was pretty good, so I wasn't too upset. I was upset at how it happened, basically. So, the decks I brought um, were uh, the Demon Handlock. That's been kind of um, being successful lately. Um, I also brought Druid with one copy of uh, Darnassus Aspirin in it, uh, with also Harrison Jones. And then lastly, I brought um, Dragon Paladin, which ended up work, which was working really well in practice. Uh, I, was, I was practicing with uh, Morag CM um, the night before the tournament, and it was kind of just killing Grim Patron. Um, and at the same time, it was also doing well against a lot of aggro decks. Um, and the way I built the deck is it has double Zombie Chow, double Mini Bots, uh, double. Uh, Sorry, Blackwing Technician, um, and also Mustafer Battle Cog Hammer or Double Mustafer Battle Cog Hammer Double True Silver, um, and then to make up for all that early game because you know Double Zombie Child is a little bit weak, uh, I have um, three Nine Drop uh, Dragons with the Consorts obviously, and basically the Consorts kind of like what carries you in the game. You're eventually you're usually going to draw them by turn or at some point in the game and have like a really good tempo swing. Uh, later in the game, and uh, you're basically able to take board control early on, and it allows you to win those aggro matchups. And uh, I don't have a copy of Silence or BGH in the deck, so uh, basically you're trying to just outvalue people. Um, you don't if you could just have better minions overall, you don't really need it. Uh, you just use your threats as threats to them instead of dealing with their threats. Um, and again, it worked really well in practice, but unfortunately in this tournament, uh, it really let me down. Um, I kind of underestimated how bad it was against Handlock. Uh, I could have gone with something like Grim Patron if I was going to go with a deck that was, you know, weak versus Handlock. Um, or I could have gone with Hunter. Uh, I kind of psyched myself out uh, thinking that Hunter and, um, sorry, Grim Patron might not be the best choice. Just thinking like, what if they go with this lineup? I have to go with that lineup, but um, probably should have done even more practice with the Dragon Paladin in the sea, its weak matchups, and then uh, it would have been obvious that it's not... I mean, you can't come up with a perfect lineup every time. So, in any case, um, maybe you could have had a bit more, a um, bit better uh, preparation, I should say. 
and uh, as you can see, I lost in the first round. Um, Cross got upset in the first round as well, and as you can see there, uh, yeah, Sevilla got knocked out, uh, so did Coroneco, and the, really the only person who managed um, to make it through, uh, or one of the top players who managed to make it through was Kano. Uh, Double A did well, I guess. Do well as well, I guess. A lot losing to Kano um, in the finals there, and then so let's like to take a look at the lower bracket. And again, some issues as you can see there. For example, uh, if you look in the middle there, Ruxa he gets basically two buys, and he gets placed in the same exact spot as Koroneko despite losing in the first round. Uh, he lo loses in the first round and basically automatically goes to the fourth round, the lowest bracket. So. Bit of a, I think, a mishap there in the draw making. Uh, in any case, uh, I defeated Utori, and uh, here's where my Dragon Paladin actually worked out um, because he played Rogue and Grim Patron. I actually, never faced against his Grim Patron. Um, I think it was Grim Patron since he was playing Warrior, but anyway, I basically beat his Rogue twice in a row and end up losing with Handlock against Rogue, which is um, obviously Rogue can beat Handlock, but Handlock is slightly favored. Uh, but pretty much crushed his rogue twice in a row, and then uh, I lost, and then I won the final game. I forgot how. Um, oh yeah, I, my uh, my handlock beat his druid, which happens more often than you would think. And then uh, in the next round, my dragon paladin let me down again, and uh, in particular, it was pretty weak against handlock again. So that's what um, kind of screwed me over. I definitely should have thought about that matchup a little bit more. Um, it's, it was pretty weak against Handlock uh, without that silence or BGH. Um, so yeah, as you can see in the draw there, a uh, few strong players on the left side, Cross uh, and Sevilla had to go against each other pretty early. Uh, Sevilla with some really questionable play, honestly. And then Cross versus K2G, who are probably the two of the better players in Japan as well. Um, and then uh, Koroneko getting locked up by Arusu. And then um, Arisu getting knocked up by Myerzaki. And so Myerzaki was actually the um, the person who won from the Fireside Gathering. And uh, he actually ended up going all the way to the finals uh, to face off against Kano, as you can see in the bracket there. And uh, I forgot to mention this, but um, one thing going into the tournament um, I was thinking about was that if I didn't win... And obviously you're not going to, I mean, I liked my chances of winning, but, you know, you have, with so many matches to play, um, sometimes, you know, luck can catch up to you. Uh, in this case, it wasn't really luck that caught up to me, it was more, I mean, I didn't, I should say, this is my being salty moment, I didn't draw a uh, Dragon Consort in, like, my first six matches, but uh, the, with how weak my deck was against Handlock, I might have been knocked out with even with good luck. Um, anyway, so... What I was saying was, is that if I didn't uh, advance, I wanted a good <laughs> Japanese player uh, to advance uh, to the Asia Pacific Championships and hopefully to BlizzCon as well. And uh, that's because, you know, I didn't want people to kind of, you know, there's a lot of people like made fun of Chinese players, for instance, uh, when I first saw them. And I think you weren't really seeing in, uh, necessarily the best Chinese players. You know, sometimes, you know, the best players can get knocked out. Uh, in a format like this, so um, I didn't want, I mean, to just be completely honest, Myrosaki had a lot of questionable plays, and and sometimes even just strictly, you know, bad plays, just um, miss, just uh, objectively, objective misplays, you know, not drawing first, and then drawing a big game hunter when he ended up, like, dealing with a Dr. Boom a different way, uh, just to name one example. So, uh, yeah, I didn't want uh, that person to be kind of representing Japan and make it look like, oh, this is Japan's best player, and uh, oh my god, Japan sucks. So uh, I definitely wanted a good player to make it through, uh, to kind of put Japan in a good light. And, uh, yeah, so it ended up being Myerzaki versus Kano in the finals. And uh, just to kind of give some hype uh, <laughs> to the tournament, we can look at the last moments of that match. Uh, right here, and uh, I think this was the first match. So I think if even if Kano lost this, he there was still um, like Myrazaki had to win twice since he was coming from the losers bracket. 
But in any case, uh, it's tied 2-2 two to two, as you can see right there. And uh, it's Druid versus uh, Temple Mage. And uh, Myrazaki just got his Ronin BGH, but he has the um, Antoninus with the triple arcing missiles here, so uh, I'm just going to let it play. さあ、3枚使用して残りに当たるか。ファイヤーボールが補充されていく。おお。ワンちゃん、これミニオンが破壊されなければワンちゃん残ります。ワンちゃんありえますね。さあ、3、3、3、3、3、3、3、3、3、